Good afternoon. Welcome to the Leaders on the Right. It's a podcast where we talk weekly with a conservative leader or community leader. And today we're really excited because we have a, a good friend of mine, longtime friend, uh, Commissioner Tom Ramsey. Welcome you, Tom, to our podcast. Um, why don't you, well, we've known each other since we were both mayors. But why don't you talk a little bit about what do you do as a commissioner, commissioner's court? I think people that just go about their daily life, they don't understand when they hear the word commissioner's court and Harris County judge and a commissioner, they think court like a judicial court. Yes, it is confusing. And, and I, I think the center of good governance in Harris County is the 33 cities, not named Houston. And that's where Cindy and I knew each other, worked with each other. She was mayor of Bel Air and I was mayor of Spring Valley. You know, we really focused on what the constituents would need, uh, basic services, law enforcement, uh, infrastructure, those sorts of things. So I think most people get what a city is, but they don't understand what the county is, particularly I'm Harris County Commissioner Precinct 3. Well, there are four county commissioners, and that's what 254 counties in the state of Texas have in common. They all have four commissioners and a county judge. Now, this is where it gets confusing. We have eight constable precincts. So my precinct, precinct three, also has precinct four constable and precinct five constable and precinct one constable and precinct three constable. So people look at this and are not sure. Well, I thought, I thought I had everything in precinct three now, and it was the same. So there's a lot of those questions. And if you live in the unincorporated area of Harris County, uh, it is nice to meet you. I am your public works director. That's like the city of Houston in terms of you're responsible for the roads. I can't fix the roads that are in Houston and my precinct because I don't have the statutory capability to do that. The city of Houston does. So I consider many of the people in Precinct 3 to be blessed because we uh, organize and take care of roads. We have 69 parks. Uh, we also have 2,500 miles of, of, uh, of ditch to take care of, 6,900 miles of roads to take care of. We replace 1,000 signs a month in terms of different things for different reasons. So county government is really in the background in terms of, of issues of public safety. We come to it with the approach of the constables in many neighborhoods contract with uh, the different constable groups for their neighborhood protection. And believe me, I think you probably get a better response time there than probably you do in the city of Houston. It sounds like I'm picking on the city of Houston, but Chief Fenner does a great job he just doesn't have enough people. He has half the number of law enforcement folks working for him that Chicago does, and they've got about the same population. So he is truly under-resourced. I don't know how actually to define it. They can, they can go from, they can look at it and say, we're not defunding the police. Yeah, but you're way underfunding uh, the police. And that's what, that's the conversations we, we, uh, we get into. So in terms of a base understanding of what I get most of the phone calls on, that's to do with roads, that's to do with drainage, that's to do with parks. And occasionally the library system gets out of control and we'll get a lot of input uh, there. So um, you went from being a small city mayor, Spring Valley, just down the road, um, to being a commissioner, one of four, uh, along with the county judge, Lee Hidalgo. So Harris County is the third largest county in the country. And I remember uh, Judge Ed Emmett, when he would give the state of the county several years ago, he said Harris County was so large that the unincorporated area, which is means those people who live not in a city within Harris County, that that alone was like, would be the fourth or fifth largest city in the country, right? So how how is it different for you, Tom, from 
being a mayor of a small town like I was Bel Air to now, how many people are you representing now? 1.2 million. It's, I mean, is it, are there similarities or not? Or I think the key in terms of uh, us keeping our sanity and being sure that we're focused on the right things is what's important for a city is important for uh, the county. And since we, more than half the unincorporated area of Harris County is in Precinct 3, I can tell you that in the next 10 years, uh, most of the growth in Harris County is going to be in Precinct 3. That's because when they drew the lines for all the wrong reasons, uh, they drew in and included uh, the unincorporated area, not because it was a good governance, but because uh, voting patterns and, and some other things. So in terms of being mayor, when I was mayor, we focused, focused on public safety. We invested more dollars per capita on law enforcement in Spring Valley than anyone else in the country. I know that because we did the numbers. When our citizens were spending more per capita on police, and you know what? Today, Spring Valley is the safest neighborhood in Harris County. It's not complicated. If you invest in what I would consider tried and true way of public safety, you'll be successful. The other thing I did uh, in terms of serving uh, Spring Valley is have a plan, an infrastructure plan. They never had a five-year capital improvement plan. We adopted that. We did that. They are still functioning in that scenario. And currently, every neighborhood but one has had all new streets put in. All the sewage uh, lines have been replaced. All the water lines have been replaced. And a new well has been drilled that allows them to completely serve uh, the city of Spring Valley in case the city of Houston turns your water off. Well, that would never happen, would it? Well. It does, because when they don't have the water, according to their agreement, uh, they're not able to provide it. So what I've tried to do as commissioner is just say, let's focus on those things. Let's get that right. But in the recent years, there's been a real emphasis to try to do the program, spend money on different things. They are spending $200 plus million dollars more this year on what I would consider the programs, but why would we get the existing programs correct? And uh, so that's the that's the focus. And uh, I think it's been uh, encouraging to get feedback from uh, folks when I'm given in the county 300% uh, 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 more roads to take care of than some of the other precincts. I'm given less money than those precincts. Yet, based on data and our response, we do a better job of taking care of them. We've got over 2,000 service requests in this morning. Every one of those 2,000 people have been contacted and they've been told when their street's going to be repaired, when their ditch is going to be cleaned out, when a sign's going to be replaced. So I think that's a pretty if you get that right, if you get that part of it right, everything else will take care of itself. So you mentioned redistricting, and I know when you got on, you precinct three actually included where I live, Bel Air. Um, and then because the redistricting, and you're the now you're the only Republican uh, on the commissioner's court where there are four other Democrats. Uh, and I remember sitting in the audience when the Democrats, because they had control, s switched your precinct with Jack Cagles. Uh, and so that, I mean, how have you found that? Because you, you started out representing people sort of down south, including Bel Air and West U, and now you're representing people up in the what, Kingwood area? Yeah, when uh, I was elected, on what was a traditional precinct three, which was kind of the west side and, and the southwest side. So it would start down in Bel Air and it'd end up in Katy and finally in Hockley, and that was kind of the west side. So I was that for a year, and then uh, uh, it was decided to redraw the lines. Now, I have to serve the citizens better, 
This wasn't gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is tweaking it. This was completely flipping, uh, to some extent, what was precinct four, now precinct four is precinct three, and precinct three is precinct four, and created much confusion. But I will say this, in the last three years, I've been county commissioner in over half the county because of how they redrawn the lines. Well, the day they adopted the map, here's a sad commentary on bad government. Here's a sad commentary on transparency and what shouldn't happen in any government. The day before they vote on the map was the first time they showed the map that it was their intention to adopt. So you show it on a Wednesday, you vote on it on a Thursday. When I first saw the map, I thought it was a joke. But it was clearly done to uh, eliminate Commissioner Cable because he was up for election last year. And they figured if they could put him in a Democrat-leaning precinct, if they could uh, put him in a precinct he's never run in before, we call that a Greenville, then the chances of him losing, well, good, he still ran a really good race. Uh, he was competitive. He lost. So it won. When Lena Hildago, Judge Hildago, voted on that map, she says, I'm voting on this map for one reason. We need to get rid of the Republican, one. And two, we need to get a four-person majority so we can raise your taxes. They were not able to secure enough money. I mean, there's no end to how much money they want to spend. So this was a tax rate. This was a, a spending uh, rate. And, you know, you, it's sad coming from the judge because the judge is supposed to represent the entire county. I think Judge Emmett was a great example of someone who represented the entire county. Judge Hildago is an example of someone representing the Democratic National Party. Now, you go from a small city to representing this big county. Uh, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, but Spring Valley, most of your council members and mayors, as I recall, a lot of them were conservative Republicans. They're conservative. Yeah. It was not by not. I know it's not. Party. It's not partisan. I think it's fair to say. Um, how do you get something as the only conservative on the commissioner's court? How do you see your role? Is it different? How can you get something accomplished? I think a lot of people look at how Ronald Reagan operated. Ronald Reagan, for most of his life, was a Democrat, and it was only in the in the latter years that he. Uh, became a Republican. He was from California, so you would, by definition, think of that as moderate. I, I, I saw someone that advocated ideas. He advocated really good policy. And, and as long as you're doing that, you're going to get, uh, I think, uh, support. And a lot of times, uh, people do not uh, support maybe something I put on the agenda because I put it on the agenda. Okay, that's that's understandable. But I think what a lot of people are understanding is maybe my position is uh, embraced by more than half the county, even though commissioner sport doesn't necessarily represent that. More than half the county is moderate to conservative. It's not way to the left. So if, if I am there advocating for uh, good uh, fiscal policies, good infrastructure basic good public safety then i i'm going to get the votes now currently with the new court uh, uh, it's two democrats uh, it's four democrats and every now and then uh, i think there's at least two of them looking for uh, a more conservative approach to it and many times we have got votes we'll vote there'll be 400 plus things on an agenda each court. And we'll vote on roughly four. And I'll vote no on half of those, roughly. Uh, currently, I'm batting about the same as Yardon, about 300, uh, which in baseball, that's pretty good. Uh, it may sound bad that, you know, you get voted. Uh, the loneliest feeling in the world is to make a motion and it dies due to the lack of second. We've and, all been there. And you've seen that too. So it, I, but I think if, if we're advocating 
for policies related to well, where's the money coming from? This is not sustainable. Uh, I've got 6,700 miles of road to maintain, and other people don't have 10% uh, uh, of that. And I think I think we we made we made some progress, and I'll just just I'll go ahead and say it. Uh, we are a purple uh, county in the middle of a very red state. And sometimes the Calvary's in Austin. And I think that uh, uh, sometimes Harris County gets that better than the city of Houston in terms of, well, you know, there's probably some things we can partner with in Austin. I would give the example of the GLO. Uh, Commissioner Don Buckingham is an extraordinary leader. Uh, she brings everybody to the table. And when you have Commissioner Garcia, Commissioner Briones, and I sitting there saying, you know, Commissioner uh, Buckingham, this is a good plan, let's do it. So that's where we need more of it. And so when we when we have opportunities, whether it comes out of Austin or whether it's grassroots uh, in Harris County themselves, most of the people in Harris County tells you the top three problems that we are having in the county is crime, crime, and crime. And when you try to tell people it's not, then you have you have no credibility. You brought up Commissioner Buckingham and GLO, and I know that um, with Harvey, that those FEMA funds, if I have read right, uh, originally they were with City of Houston, that it didn't, did, I think the county got some too, but it ended up being put with the GLO. What typically happens when you get a tranche of money from the feds doing emergency response to Hurricane Ike, uh, it was the same way, now Hurricane Harvey. It's run through a state agency. The state agency they, they have chosen through the years has been the GLO. So the GLO works with the folks in Washington, HUD, and others to properly disperse funds according to criteria, federal criteria, and other criteria. Well, uh, it was in the last year of George P. Bush's uh, term as commissioner, land commissioner, and he was doing his uh, uh, request for uh, proposals from all the different counties and cities that were impacted by Harvey. We all submitted in Harris County, got nothing. So we were the most impacted county in the state, one. We are the uh, uh, we are the county that has the Harris County Flood Control, which is an entity unlike any other in the in America. It is the most highly regarded flood control agency on the universe, and they were in the middle of this. And finally, we had voted the two point five billion dollar bond issue, so we're bringing money to the table and we got nothing. So I called Commissioner Bush and I. Told him to get out his big cheap pad number two pencil and have a conversation, which he kind of did. And we were able to, with some encouragement from other people, I know Governor Perry got involved at that point. Uh, and ultimately, we are getting $750 million. But because of the way uh, Commissioner Bush handled it, uh, it cost us at least a year, maybe two. And with the uh, Biden inflation, uh, that you know, that's about if you're out of a billion dollars, you're going to lose uh, half a billion at least in, in inflation. So it it we're back on track now. We've identified projects. Uh, I've been communicated with on the seven hundred fifty million dollar pot that's coming from the GLO. Uh, precinct three will get twenty five percent of the funds. I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm just asking for fair treatment. So that's what Don, that's what Commissioner Buckingham, and I'll go ahead and give credit to Commissioner Briones and Commissioner Garcia, because without their vote on court to have a fair distribution, uh, Precinct 3 could have ended up on the short end of the state. Well, I, mean, I know Kingwood was hit, um, like Bel Air, like so many places out here, out west, it was hit hard. Do you? You know, do you feel like we're better prepared? Most people are aware that Judge uh, Hidalgo took a leave of absence for um, mental health issues. 
you know, I think there's been a lot of concerns with it being, you know, hurricane season, and we were lucky that we didn't have a significant hurricane. But people were concerned she's supposed to be the emergency, you know, head of emergency response in the county, not having her at the helm. You know, are we better prepared? I mean, has the county done some stuff to better prepare us so we wouldn't have another Harvey event? And when you don't have your county judge sitting at the helm during the emergency, what happens? So, okay. so two part question. Two part. Address the first part. Yes, we are better positioned to address an event. There's been a lot of acre feet of detention created in the last uh, four years, five years since Harvey. So that part's good. We're probably a third to a halfway there. I know that I participated with Representative Farless and Congressman Crenshaw on a TC gesture. Uh, detention basin uh, out in the Champions area on Cypress Creek. And that's a $50 million project. Uh, we were able to secure through, through Congressman Crenshaw, $10 million. Representative Farley's got $12 million. We're bringing another $25 million. Most of that's GLO funds. So there, all those projects are queued up. We have to get those in the ground in the next two years. So the good news is we operate right better when we have a deadline to deal with. So we are going to be in much better position. But we live in Harris County. If you live in Harris County, you live in a floodplain. So that part of it, uh, uh, that part of it uh, uh, had had changed, and. And so we're we are uh, we are working on that in terms of emergency response. Uh, you know, when you have a leader like Judge Emmett, and I, I'm not defaulting to Judge Emmett, he's probably one of the most respected leaders this county's ever seen. But when the the key to emergency response is, are you able to collaborate? Are you able to call the 33 cities not named Houston? Are you able to contact? the different folks and get everybody uh, on the same page and work. Judge Emmett uh, could do that. Judge Hidalgo can't do that. And whether she's there or not, whether she's there or not. So shifting gears a little bit, you mentioned some of the other entities, you know, like the constables, et cetera, but there's the Harris County Health. Can, I know that they've got a big bond referendum. I think the first that they've had in a long time. Can you talk a little bit about that and so voters will know what they'll be voting on? Yeah, we we have, uh, there's been a bond issue called for a November vote. And those of us that have lived more than three days in Harris County think of that not as the uh, Harris Health, but as the hospital district. So I'm going to refer to it as a hospital district so people will know what I'm talking about. So the hospital district, which operates Ben Top, one of our two level one trauma centers in the county, the other is Memorial Hermann, and they're both in the medical center. So we are long overdue in terms of being sure that we're able to provide uh, indigent health care. And uh, I will tell you that we probably in Harris County provide indigent health care for the nine or 10 surrounding counties as well. A lot of people come through our hospital system. My questions have been primarily along the lines of you have a $2.9 billion program and you're going to spend uh, uh, and you're calling for a $2.5 billion bond. So let's just start with that. There's a half a billion dollar, give or take, difference between you, what your program is and what your bond is. And I'm told, don't worry about it. We're going to raise the money. So that's a red flag. We do have some reserves to the tune of $800 million. Maybe the plan is to pull it out of the reserves. Uh, that's a lot of reserves because if you remember, the hospital district last year, this time last year, when we were having pretty, uh, pretty tense budget discussions, uh, I was told, and I'd question the hospital district, what they're doing with their rate, their surpluses, and 
they're saying they couldn't do basic services at the hospital district because they couldn't get a tax rate. Well, they didn't get a tax rate increase last year. They adopted the no new revenue. And here's the point. They finished with a surplus of money this year. So when people see that and they'll say, well, you said we were had a, a dire condition last year. We don't have that this year. It causes me to question, are you ready for a $2.5 billion bond issue? So here's how the money's being spent. Uh, two billion is gonna go to build a new level one trauma center at LBJ. What is a level one? Level one trauma center is a is a, a hospital where you take the most critical victims. If if I get shot, I want to go to Bentall because they've got surgeons and emergency response people there to take care of you like no place else on the planet. So it's extraordinary the resources that you have in a level one. It's not your typical hospital. It is extraordinary care would be a civil engineer's description of a level one. So uh, they're going to build a new level one uh, trauma. But here's what I also uh, determined. It's not the brick and mortar that makes it a level one uh, trauma center. It's the... It's the docs that are in the level one trauma center. So my question is, have you started recruiting uh, the docs to be in there? And kind of, but that's a half a billion dollar a year increase in operating expenses to have a level one. So we can build a great new building, but you better be recruiting. You better be preparing in your budget to handle that. Of course, I am told, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll figure that out when we get there. It always makes me nervous. Yeah, and so I, I think that's part of it. And as I look at it, at, we have two medical schools in in Houston area. Well, there's more than that, but the two we partner with is Baylor, one of the most acknowledged medical schools on the planet, and UT, uh, great reputation. Well, UT staffs its residency, those people in medical school, at it, at it, uh, 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 the, the the one on the east side. Then you've got Baylor, who does Mantop. So when you're when you're asking, uh, okay, well the 400 million that we're advocating for Mantop, when is that going to? We've got the we've got the other uh, hospital identified. Was that Memorial Hurt? No. The, 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 the the uh, UT. Oh, okay. uh, uh, so the uh, again, the the bond issue is based on having uh, uh, a, a brand new hospital uh, that you're going to create, and then we're going to spend 400 million on the top. There's not it's not clear when that money is going to be spent or how that money is going to be spent, but I would think Ben top. Uh, you would need that. Uh, you would need that immediately. So uh, they're working through the de details, and then a final part of the bond issue is there'll be a clinic built in each precinct. And when I ask where would it be in precinct three, and he says, "Well, tell us what you think." Well, if you're asking me to select a place to put, that's not a that's not an answer. That sounds like a well, just put it in place you want to put it. We've got people checking in on that, but I would think you'd want to build that one first. Uh, those clinics first to take the pressure off of Ben Taub and some of the others. So the devil's in the details, uh, whether or not uh, uh, it, it, it clearly we need, we have a need, uh, it's just the details of how that money is going to be spent that I have a question. If it gets passed, do you, do you all have any oversight over it? So let's say the voters go ahead, which a lot of times they do. The uh, they hospital district, hospital board, right. they have a board, and that board, we have uh, oversight of their annual tax write. That comes okay. through commissioners. Um, so to some degree, we are over the purse strings of how they uh, 
of, of, of that. So there's there's that oversight we've requested uh, that we be given be given updates. We're a lot more involved in their budgeting process than they probably are used to. Talking about the budget, um, I know that you you voted for a tax rate decrease, but appraisals everyone knows have gone up. But you know, and I know a year ago when you and Commissioner Cadwell, because they need four votes to raise the rate, um, you all were missing in action, so to speak. Um, this year it was just you, but I know that you mentioned crime, and you had told me before that you felt like the reason you could support it was the attention to some of the things that you were uh, concerned about last year that wasn't in last year's budget. Can you talk about that? Last year, I had concerns with the revenue plan for the county. And as I said last year, and to some degree, I'll say this year, we don't have a revenue problem, we got a spending problem. And even though they won't listen to me when it comes to eliminating a lot of the social problems, I'm not opposed to social, I'm not opposed to kindergarten daycare. I just don't think the county should be doing it. And they've gotten into so many areas. What we need to be dealing with is a $50 million detention basins not kindergarten daycare. And uh, unfortunately, we've slipped into that mode where we're, we're getting involved in a lot of different things. So Commissioner Cagle and I last year just asked him, can you look at what you're spending the money on, particularly when it comes to law enforcement? And for six straight meetings, they posted the same blessed tax rate. That's not negotiating. If if there was negotiation, you'd post one a little lower, you'd identify a few things that we wouldn't be spending money on. That's what you do, but they posted the same tax rate for six times. So when we look at the numbers, that saved the Harris County taxpayers $650 million last year. So this year, when it came time to discuss priorities, lo and behold, we had some really good things on the table, like a $119 million pay raise for law enforcement in Harris County. It's starting. It's the largest pay raise for law enforcement ever seen. This will allow us to compete with the surrounding counties, allow us to fill open positions. So as I've told people, I had 119 million reasons to show up this year and participate and vote in the uh, in the tax rate. And I, so I think much of what happened last year, as stressful and tension-filled as that was, I think resulted in a better uh, better budget this year. And uh, if you're keeping score on a three-year basis, we've, we've still saved a lot of tax dollars uh, over the last three years. Uh, we, we're spending more because the price was up. But I think the priorities were better. You mentioned pay raises and competitive pay. I do know that that's an issue. I mean, you know, when you were a mayor, that there is trend that a lot of your small cities, you're always competing with your other cities as well as the county. Uh, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're short staffed, particularly where it's boots on the ground, uh, police officers, constables out there, because they're the ones who keep us safe. Um, so, last question sort of relates to a subject that's, I think, near and dear to your heart and mind that we've been fighting for over the last year for transparency, and that relates to how elections are run. And the county, and I think it was before you even, before you got on, wasn't the tone, or was it after you got on when they? Um, yeah, just because I was elected doesn't mean we have we had it started having problems with election. Yeah, that was just a <laughs> yeah. unfortunate yeah. set of circumstances. It's about that time. Yeah, that they decided the Democrats on the county commissioner's court decided to take away running the elections from the county clerk and the voter registration from the county tax assessor, who were in fact uh, two Democrat women who were elected to do those specific jobs 
jobs, they took them away and put it in election uh, administrator, which is part of the state law until recently. Uh, personally, I feel like it was a horrible failure. We had not just one election, several elections that there were major screw ups. So now because you, and you mentioned partnership and what happens in Austin, the state legislature has taken away in over counties a certain size, which is Harris County, and said that it has to be back in the hands of well, the county clerk and the county tax assessor. So to the voter out there that's, which I hear from our base, I hear like, why even bother? It's so screwed up, why should I vote? What's your response? Do you think it's gonna be better from what you've seen? I know that they, they fought it and, County attorney will continue to fight it. Well, you, you look at what uh, it, it's the best definition of voter suppression that you could ever try to uh, illustrate what happened in Harris County the last two or three years. And that voter suppression was in the categories of uh, how the vote was handled. Uh, we've all heard about paper, we've all heard about polling locations not open on time, uh, but just the basic transparency of, you know, we don't have anything to hide, come see us. There has been an inability to get any information. And here's what I know, with those electronic machines that we have now handling voting, <laughs> you know everything. In the, in the memory of those voting machines, you know everything. We can't get access to anything. And so that is that's not a good look when you do, when you when you spend more time suing the uh, attorney general not to release information that should be uh, something you'd want to share with anybody. Anytime I bring up elections, I get accused of being some partisan hack that is uh, uh, making this a very political thing. I just want answers. That's all I've ever wanted. I know as your been really outspoken in terms of trying to get that information. That's all we've ever asked for. So my message to the voters in Harris County is this election will be better than anything we've had in the last three years. And let me tell you why. Because for the first time, we have a clerk that has 16 years experience running it. And even though uh, she's of a different party, I'll take 16 years of doing it right. And we had a great leader, Stan Center, who uh, did that. But she worked on those for 16 years. She'll be in charge of it. And as she is, and, and you got to serve with her in that whole debacle, uh, he had an elections commission. And so the elections commission was kind of a just a group set up to blame and, and rubber, stamp. rubber stamp and do do other things. So the changes that have been made, the elimination, they can say, well, this wasn't fair. It's turned over to two uh, elected officials who happen to be Democrat. And I'm sitting here telling you, it's going to be a lot better because the people that are doing it know what they're doing. I'm sorry, Mr. Tatum did not know what he was doing when he was trying to run the election down there. They were trying to do too much. They had too many voting locations. You can say, well, that's counterintuitive. Well, when you're trying to get it right, so when you try to increase and you got uh, hammered in terms of you need to provide a lot more uh, uh, voting election judges and, and other things. So now at least we have someone in the chair. And believe me, there's been a lot of partisan pushback from the other side. I'll say the more, I'll be nice today and say the progressive side of the House saying that it could be this or it could be that. Well, uh, I've been impressed with uh, at least what I've seen uh, uh, County Clerk uh, Tanisha Husband and how she has taken this uh, election we've got in the city of Houston. I'll call that like uh, spring training, getting us ready for the real uh, test of, of the primaries coming up next March. So I'm encouraged, I would tell people uh, we've got people in, in place, and, and even we have uh, from 
from the service side of the house, we have Austin more involved in watching. And so it's going to be more difficult. Will, will there still be attempts to do things in a non-transparent way? Yes, but I think we're in a better place than we were. I, I would agree with that. What I'm hearing from people, um, members that, that we have representing the party in Central came on the ballot board, that there is, things are going to be smoother um, as it relates to the no, upcoming November election. But also, I think what people don't realize is that with the prior two administrators, and particularly the first one, got rid of a lot of people who had been there not, you know, not looking at whether they're Democrat or Republican, just got rid of people who had worked and run elections for 10 years, 15 years. And I think County Clerk Cuspeth is trying to bring people back with that experience. Um, so I'm cautiously, um, I'm not going to say optimistic, but I'm cautiously hopeful that it will be better. I think there's going to be the attempt. And if nothing else, in the end, because it's now being run by an elected official, if it's screwed up again, then that person can be voted out. Of yeah, because people forget there were just as many Democrats upset with the last three elections as Republicans. So this wasn't in the context of do we know what we're doing. There were many, many people upset on both sides of the party. So to wrap up, Tom, is there anything that just kind of shocked you or surprised or thought you thought when you got a lot of years in public service, as well as your professional career as an engineer dealing with clients and multiple personalities, is there anything that surprised you or that you were just like, boy, I didn't know I was getting myself into this? Well, I, I would, uh, people said, would, would use terms like, well, county commissioner, that could be, uh, that could be a lot of fun being county commissioner. I'm, I'm still looking for the fun part of that. So I guess that it's not nearly as much fun as what uh, people had described. I've, I've enjoyed uh, making a difference in service. And when somebody calls you and says, would you come please fix my street? And we're able to go fix their street. There's a lot of satisfaction that comes with doing things and doing those kinds of things well. This isn't about, government should not be about resolutions. It shouldn't be about uh, the petty things that we get into. It should be about those things. When a lady calls and says, people are speeding by my house, can you slow them down? And working with the constables and other people. So the ability to actually go and impact somebody's quality of life, that's been, uh, that's been uh, that part's been fun. And we look forward to doing more of it. Well, I appreciate it, Commissioner Ramsey. Thank you. Lone Ranger. Okay, well, thank you. I'm looking for Tonto. I can be my Tonto.